To figure it out, Howitt is using a capsule packed with sensors that record temperature, salinity, and depth at intervals going down 1,000 feet to the ocean bed. The measurements give Howitt an immediate picture of how the meltwater streaming off the glacier and the denser salt water below stack up like a layer cake. So this plot is showing the increase in temperature with depth. What we see here is very cold, nearly freezing water at the surface. And then as we go down, it increases its temperature as it mixes with the warmer ocean water below. So this transition zone, this almost flat line, shows us that there's a very sharp transition between that fresh water and the salty ocean water below. How it thinks the rush of cold meltwater coming off the glacier might be creating a vacuum at the calving face that pulls the warm ocean water underneath it, delivering heat directly to the base of the glacier. One hypothesis is that as you increase the melt and you increase the force of this conveyor belt of fresh water going out of the fjord, you're bringing more heat from the ocean into the fjord to melt more ice. And that would be a strong feedback that could actually lead to, to more glacier melting. It's a much more dynamic environment than we've thought in the past. The story of the mountain glaciers and the ice sheets shows that abrupt changes in the ice aren't the exception. They're the rule. There are concerns that we get to some point beyond which strong feedbacks in the climate system kick in and cause changes that we're really unprepared to deal with. The ice may have more surprises to come, but based on the latest research, the best guess for future sea level rise comes down to a simple calculation. In the next hundred years, the oceans will expand on their own as they warm, accounting for about a foot of sea level rise. Another foot will likely come from the loss of the world's mountain glaciers as they melt away. The ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica won't disappear, but their combined melt is expected to add about another foot. The total equals an estimated sea level rise approaching three feet or one meter by about 2100. It may not sound like much, but over 100 million people live within three feet of sea level. Cities around the world will spend trillions building up coastal defenses. Low-lying regions such as Florida, Vietnam, and Bangladesh will be devastated. Many island nations will cease to exist. The consequences will test our ability to adapt like never before. But it doesn't stop there. If we look beyond 100 years, the biggest questions might even be what we do. There's huge things we don't know about the ice sheets, but our uncertainty about what we decide to do may be bigger than that. But if we make it really warm, I think a whole lot of us get really nervous about what the ice will do. This is going to be one of the pivotal moments in human history. Ice is too important for us in terms of the climate of the planet, in terms of sea level, in terms of the fundamental operating systems of the planet for us to continue to ignore it. The final chapter of Balog's story plays out on the southern coast of Iceland, where he discovers an unrivaled confrontation between the ice and the sea. Eight thousand years ago, the island was encased in ice. But now, the last remnant of its ice cap is quickly disappearing. As the ice seeps down towards the sea, it discharges into a meltwater lagoon. Each day, the tide draws the icebergs out into the North Atlantic.
I'm not aware of any other place in the world where you can see this dynamic between the ice and the surf in the same way. What I see in this ice is a unique sculpture by nature. Each one is a, a hope diamond, you know, some really perfect, pure manifestation of form and color and texture. They come up here on the waves, they sit here for 12 hours after the tide goes out, then the tide comes back in, takes them away, and they're gone for good. And in that transitoriness, I see extinction. Our brains are programmed to think that geology is something that happened a long time ago or will happen a long time in the future. We don't think that that can happen during these little years that we each live on this planet. But the reality is that it does. Extreme Ice website, see dramatic graphics that show how the world's coastlines would change if all of Greenland's ice melted. Find it on pbs.org. This Nova program is available on DVD. The companion book, Extreme Ice Now, is also available. To order, visit shoppbs.org or call us at 1-800-PLAY-PBS.